om jag tar vi jadar i lång. My dear friends, let's take some coins, put them in the pushka, and as you see, we shnas hakel, we do it together, and let's have in mind all those who need a refuah, a shuah, a cure, get saved from the predicaments that they're in, and made this happen right now. The last two days, I should say yesterday and Erev Shabbos, we spoke about the Mittel Rebbe, whose Yorzeit and his Chagag was yesterday and his past Shabbos. I just want to pick up on two little events which illustrate the particularity of the Mittel Rebbe. The Mittel Rebbe, who was a symbol of the fusion of the divine and the mundane in many, ma- in many matters, in many aspects. But here are two little vignettes. Story is told that when it came to the reading of Parsha's Kitavo, Kitavo is the parasha where there is all these, what we call hidden blessings, the apparent curses. And it was a Shabbat reading, and suddenly, in the middle of the reading, the Mittel Rebbe, still a young man, fainted. They finally revived him. And they were wondering what happened. And he said he heard frightening words. All these curses. He got so frightened. But he asked him, I mean, you've heard this parasha many times in the past. What, what happened this week? And in fact, he was so sick that it took months for him to recuperate to the point they weren't sure that Yom Kippur, which was a few weeks away from Parshish Kisavoy, will he be able to even fast? And then they realized the reason why this was something novel to him, because usually the Alter Rebbe, his father, would read the Torah portion. So when the Alter Rebbe read, and he heard, he heard different words. He heard the inner dimension of these supposed curses, which as we know are all blessings. He actually only heard blessings. This particular time it was, the Alter Rebbe was not there. Somebody else read the Torah. So he heard the simple words. And those simple words were frightening. Another interesting story was he was once traveling for his father's missions. And he came to the city of Orsha. And that was just the time of the Purim festival. The crowd got together in the shul to listen to the Megillah reading. And obviously the reader read the Megillah in the traditional sing-song with a tune, with all the excitement that comes along, the noise-making during Haman, and everybody has their style, which Hamans you do make noise, which Hamans you don't. Do you bang with your feet, do you shoot, do you make some crackers, do you make the grager? But, as we say in Yiddish, the really happy occasion of this Megillah reading. Now, custom had it in this particular shul that they would put a tip, there was a little plate, and everybody from the shul goes, they would put a tip for the Megillah reading. Megillah reader, that was his uh, way of making a few pennies, I guess. Came down to Rebbe, the Mittel Rebbe, excuse me, he took out a note of five ruble, which was a huge sum compared to what everybody else gave, an enormous amount. Everybody gave a few copies, and he gave, uh, in fact, all the donations from the whole community together didn't add up even to one ruble. And he gave five ruble. The one who read the Megillah didn't know who the Mittel Rebbe was. And he was taken back. And he said, I mean, I appreciate, but I don't really deserve such a huge amount. Why would I accept it? So the Rebbe said, no. The, Mag- the Mittel Rebbe said, no. You definitely deserve it. I just heard a beautiful story that I never heard. I heard a marvelous, beautiful story. And for a new story, one has to pay. When the Chassidim heard that story, they realized, usually the Alter Rebbe would read the Megillah. 
when the real Rebbe reads the Megillah and the Mittel Rebbe hears, it's a different story. Hamelech, the king, is about God. Mordechai ve Esther, the story of Moshiach, and so on and so forth. A different story. That was the Mittel Rebbe. His ears were in tune with his level of his soul. His physical ear, ears heard this which the soul appreciated. So may the Abish to help that we should reach this level. You know how? By being the Beis Hamikdash. Please God. Now.